Here's a short prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you that we live in a nation that recognizes fathers, mothers, many, many other capacities. But today, our nation recognizes Father's Day. And we thank you that thousands of years ago, the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. So we call you our Father today and thank you that as we go forward in this day and especially now in this message, that you will cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened that you'll help us recognize and embrace the power of Father that you've placed in those of us who are. And as we go forward to do what you've established us to do as fathers, we will see the manifestation of your goodness in the lives of our children, our families, our society, and our world. We give you the honor for being the glorious, sovereign God that you are. And we thank you in Jesus' name for this time together. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Now, Holy Spirit gave me this subject matter uh, 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 connecting to a kind of, of cliche that we've heard over history time and over the years. Uh, called, uh, I, I don't know if it was one of the presidents or somebody, had this big deal about the buck stops here. Hmm. Meaning, there's not going to be any excuses. I'm not going to pass this responsibility off to anybody else. I'm going to hound my business. Amen. Huh? And so, uh, out of that concept, I came up with this subject matter E-word for today. The E-word, the father buck, <laughs> stops here. Yeah. Hmm. And I need fathers, again, biological or, or fathers, spiritual. I need you to wave your hand. Fathers, just wave your hand. Men, wave, say the, bu the father buck, come on, father the father buck, buck stops, here. stops here. All right, so now what we're going to do, getting into introduction in this lesson here, God's word is filled with examples, instructions, and many points about what it takes to be a good father. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about confusion and craziness in the system that's around us and the society that makes big impact and impression on people. But I'm going to talk about how God is a good father. He is a good, good father. Yes, he is. And he puts forth, I, I, I was searching when I was preparing the lesson, I, I, I typed in the word fatherhood. And King James Version, there's no word in scripture. Fatherhood, the word fatherhood is not in King James Version of the scriptures. But the examples of father is permeated everywhere. Yeah. Instructions about father is in there. Many tremendous points and magnificent uh, presentations are all throughout the word of God that can help us understand, appreciate, receive, and put into practice what it means to be a good father. So let's look at a few of those places that can help us reach for the strength and blessing of being a God kind of father to our children. Hmm. 
You understand what I mean? I want to make you a deal that you cannot refuse. <laughs> God is our father. And the God father concept, when you appreciate and understand what it's all about, uh, in different cultures, uh, the, 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 the God father attitude, the patriarchal, that means father being led and father directed and father doing what fathers are supposed to do. In those cultures, it's amazing to see the sense of strength, the sense of determination, even the sense of boldness that makes a tremendous impact on the lives of people, okay? Now, uh, uh, I, want to, I want us to, 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 this morning, I want to share with us uh, some of those things that a good father will do. Hmm. Um, uh, I had a request to say, well, tell some of the things about what you do, what you did as a father, me, 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 me personally. I paid my son last week to say good things about me. <laughs> you know, and he did, and I paid him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, and I hope this doesn't sound, um, uh, uh, what you call that word when you boast about yourself? I hope it doesn't sound braggadocious and what have you. But uh, uh, God has blessed my life to impact lives of other people, uh, not only here in this church, other churches in this country, uh, but other countries around the world. Amen. Amen. I had a guy called me from, called me from another country uh, two or three weeks ago. And uh, he's a grown man, married, got kids, got sons, that like that. And he called it. He said, I was just thinking about you, and I wanted to call you and tell you I love you. Amen. And years ago, several years ago, when he got married, <clears throat> I attended his wedding ceremony, and he said even though his natural biological father wasn't there, just because I was there, my presence being there strengthened him and touched his life in such a marvelous way, amen. amen. And then so, and then so there's people. Uh, I've got uh, four children of my own, and uh, nine <laughs> grandchildren. Amen. And 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 one of them is named exactly after me, amen. Stanley Lewis Scott the mm, Third. Mm, 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 mm. uh, anyway, 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 and so. <clears throat> Uh, as I was looking back and reflecting on the kinds of things that uh, uh, I noticed and recognized, first and foremost, um, I start with being grateful for relationship with God. Amen. And then next, I deal with my father, who's gone on to be with the Lord. But, and I may break out in tears any minute about that. But... Uh, uh, I learned a lot from him, my father. And what I received from him helped me to be the man that I am. Yeah. Huh? Which then gave me opportunity to pour into the lives of other people the things that my father taught me. Natural father and heavenly father. Now, when I go through these message and lessons today, I first want to ask you to get a hold of your thinking process and not allow it to get carried away with, I wish that that man that I dealt with would have been a better father. Okay? Don't, don't, please don't go there, all right? And don't go with this man that's now with me now. I wish somebody would knock him upside the head and make him a better father. 
Uh, don't go there with that. And then also, please don't let the, the, the sense of awareness about some of the systems that we have to deal with and some of the issues that are going around us in terms of males who go around making babies and ain't nowhere near being a father. Hmm. They just swinging and dangling and that's all. Hmm. They haven't the foggiest clue about what being a father is. Okay? Well, what I would like to put forth here is some of the points about what a good father will do. And I will share some personal things up in here along the way that I know to work because they worked, E.D. And in spite of wherever any situation is at this physical moment, God can turn it around and fix it and make it work like he determines for it to work. Hallelujah. So I want you to be willing to believe God, trust God that he's able to do that in spite of what you see, in spite of what seems to be going on around you and or in your own personal relationship. OK, say OK. okay. All right. So now in the main scripture text, there, there's a highlight point there that that when I was looking through scripture and asking Holy Spirit to show me what are the kinds of things he wants us wants us to get to know today is that here's one of the main things that a father will do. A father will teach his children. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm going to try to let this be the last negative kind of thing I say, but uh, it almost doesn't matter how many children you have, you still need to teach them. And I kind of like want to say like Cecily Tyson. Cecily Tyson said, if you're not going to do right by them, don't bring them here. Huh? Amen. And, if you, and, and, and don't be bringing that that you can't take care of. Huh? Okay, so all right, all right. So a father will teach his children. I got that out of the scripture, Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. We read it a little bit. I'll read it again. It says, for I know him. This, this is, uh, I'm talking about Abraham. For I know him, God, saying that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. How? To do justice and judgment, why? That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Hmm. How awesome it is, and whether you feel it or not, or whether you recognize it or not, God picks you. Huh? And, as, and, and, and in connection with his picking you, his expectation is that you will teach, you will command your children. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, I, I, don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because people will tell you, I, I started to say, I don't, I, I don't want to begin to talk about, uh, just think about, well, what happened? What happened? You know, well, a whole lot of people will talk about what happened and this system, that, and that went over there and they did this so we couldn't do that. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, how, how shall I say I've been through all the junk and mess. I was called nigger black. I was called ugly. Uh, the, the, the white boys in the high school I went to rubbed up in my hair and, and said, whoa, this is fuzzy. You got fuzzy hair. And, and, and I don't know, uh, probably one time I walked by somebody and they would have said, ooh, 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 kind of like that, you understand? And then I told you all that incident where I got kicked out of the glee club in, in high school because we were up there singing about no man is an island. Uh, each man is our brother. Each man is our own. And this little white boy put his arm around me. You are my brother. And I knocked him in the head. <laughs> and they put me out. Because <laughs> that was during my radical days. You know, that was the black power Stanley Scott. You understand? He put me out of Glee Club anyway. 
Uh, but hey, been through all of that. But I'm still here. And there's people you can pick up the telephone right now and call them and they'll tell you that Stanley Scott was a good father to them. Hmm? In spite of all, well, it was this and it was a certain a and the system worked against it and they held us back and blah. But I'm here. Huh? And I can give you phone numbers right now. I can give you emails. I can give you Facebook pages. And you, you, you can look at my phone right now. And tons of people sending me Happy Father's Day messages from all around the world. In spite of all of what's been going on in the country, in the nation, whoever was president, whatever happened in society and the system. So I said all that to say, you can make it. There is no excuse for not being a good father. Hmm? So then, this is what a good father will do. So I'm telling you straight up. Teach your children. Hmm? Command them. Look at how he stretched it out. Uh, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep, not just any old kind of way of living. Hmm? They shall keep the way of the Lord doing what? To do justice and judgment. Why? That the Lord may bring upon you, say me. me. Yeah, he will bring upon you that that he has spoken about you. Hmm? Uh, so tell me some of so, so, the men in here, fathers in here. Tell me, what has God spoken over you, what has God? What has God promised you? What has God said about you? Hmm? Tell me some things. Hmm? He wants to bring that to pass. Did He say you'd be the head and not the tail? Huh? Did He say you'd be blessed coming in and blessed going out? Huh? Did He? Did He say that all of your needs will be met according to His riches in glory in Christ? I, I can't hear nobody say yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, God wants to be able to do that Amen. in your life in connection with your following his direction to command, to teach your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it takes time to teach children. <laughs> it takes doing it over and over and over again. And it seems like, and sometimes it takes, you've been doing it five, 10, 15 years. And sometimes you look at that boy and say, I don't, whose body did you come out of? And like I told my one son, my one son, one time I told him, I said, boy, you got my name on you. You just can't be living any old kind of way and doing any old kind of thing. And I gave him a good beating. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yo. You know, he calling me up to school. Now, I have to read. I've done crazy, stupid stuff in my life. I've made serious mistakes and done wrong stuff, this and that. But I got to the place where after they call home and say, this going on with your son, your child, I send the wife up. You go, to the, you go up to the school. I don't even want them to see my face connected with this crazy acting boy. You know, sit here, sit here, sit But uh, when the time comes, then... I would help them recognize, and this son right here, I, tell, I remember telling him so clearly, boy, there are consequences to your actions. Huh? And I take him down in the basement. I line him up next to the, dish, the, the washing machine down there and take him, put both hands on the, 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 the washing machine, both of them. Hey! Huh? <laughs> and I had this board... That was about three feet long. I carved a handle hold out of it. You know, you see any sorority paddle kind of thing? Yeah, carved a handle out of there like that. And then I wrote on there, the rod of correction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and then, you know how kids are smart? That's why I make them give you your, their phone. Because you tell them, don't use your phone. They'll say, okay, and then they'll do it down here like this, like this, like that. So you have to be smarter than the kids. So during those times of consequences, consequences, 
and using the rod of correction, I learned that the children, one, if they know you're getting ready to beat them, they want to wear thick clothes. <laughs> then number two, they catch the rhythm. They know that when you swing back, they brace up and get ready for it. Well, I would fake like I was getting ready to hit it and stop just short. Then they would relax and say, whoo, and then I'd follow through, bang, and lift them clear up off the floor. <laughs> so so you, 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 you have to be smarter than the child. Because they'll try to outsmart you. Yes, they will. And this other son, Carol, my youngest son, <laughs> one time he did something, my wife told me. Both of them had done something. Both had done something. So, so I was getting ready. So I was getting ready to add some correction. So Carol busts out the door, screaming out the door, running down the street, hollering, oh, he's getting ready to kill me. Help! Somebody help! He running down the street just to screaming. And I stood up for poor boy, get in this house. Make all the whole neighborhoods acting like we're doing child abuse over here. Get up in here. So, so but you but you have to teach your children. You have to command them, not only them, but your household. And declare that in this house, we will do justice and we will do judgment. There's a lot of pressure on young people these days uh, from outside, from the society, and these serious kind of things that we've been teaching in relationship to. There's a lot of pressure on young people from inside the house with child abuse and, 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 and all this other kind of thing going on this, that way, and the other. And so we have to get to the place where we have to make sure that the household understands that this house will serve the Lord over here. Come on now. We will serve the Lord in this house. Yeah, Dad, but everybody's doing it. Everybody ain't in this house. Well, so-and-so and this, they, they, what's your last name? <laughs> your name's Scott. Well, Scots don't do that. Yeah. huh? Yeah, but so, I, yeah, that may be what they do, but over here we don't do that. Right. Hmm? And so uh, uh, this business about teaching your children and teaching children in general, commanding children in general, even though it's not, uh, you know, it's not kind of like uh, in this society around us, it's all this other kind of stuff. But shh, back in the day when I was coming along, the neighbor down the street could correct me. And then when I got home, I got recorrected <laughs> because the neighbor had to do the correction. Huh? But every opportunity that we have as fathers, we should use it in order to teach children. Uh, those in our house and those who we have opportunity to come in contact with in their lives. Okay, let's do this in support text scriptures. Uh, number, this is another number two highlight point. Here's what a good father will do. He will help his children know the real provider. Hmm. Now, example is just example is just such a powerful teacher. Example is a powerful teacher. Well, if your children see you using and manipulating the system, then the, what, they, they can't help but to take that in and figure that's the way it's supposed to be. So that's the way they're going to do it. Huh? Well, early in our house, we helped our children understand God provides for this house. Huh? You ever had one of those? <laughs> I don't know how many doors I've kicked off. Just maybe, maybe just two. You know, this is my room. Bam! Oh, really? Shoom! Here comes off the hinges and they kick the whole door off the wall. In this house, <laughs> you don't have a room. <laughs> huh? And uh, 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 because just think about it. Just think about it. 
the food that you eat on that, from that table, that came from God. Huh? Those clothes on your back, who, I don't know, I was talking, we were talking to somebody, and maybe they were saying something to the extent that one of their children wanted to get all up and eat all of this. I don't know if it was here or someplace else. And, and the person said, well, the child said, well, if I can't do what I want to do, I'm going to go, go somewhere else. He said, well, okay, fine, but before you go, take off your shirt, take off your shoes, take off, put that phone down. The only thing you can take out of here is what you, what you bought. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we have to help children understand that God provides you this house and show them examples. Sit down with them and pray and say, okay, God, we need this paid or, or we got this issue going on. <laughs> Shauna, Shauna, one time, <clears throat> I don't know, well, she had a, a bird or just a flower, some, something we were doing around the house. I think we prayed for the bird, and the bird died, and we were praying for the flowers, and somehow the flowers died. And then sometimes she's, huh? And then we prayed for a dog. We had a dog. I said, dog died. And then Shana sitting around. She bust out. She said, oh, please don't pray for me. Please. Oh, don't pray for me. <laughs> so, so, but, but you, you have to. Example, you have to show your children. You have to put before them, these are the kinds of things that helps this family be what it is and do what it does. Now, there, there, I'll say this just a little later in, in a few minutes in a couple of the verses, that it's important for us to be connected with God so that when we pray to him, he's able to do in our family what it is that, that he wants done. But nonetheless, no matter how horrendous it looks, no matter how uh, over, overbearing it looks, you still believe God, you still trust God, and you teach your children that no matter what's going on, we believe God to make a difference in our lives and in our families. Um, uh, because there's been a lot of giving up of, uh, of uh, opportunity instead of just trusting God. And, and, it, and messages throughout the church and throughout the body of Christ these days where we are now, God is requiring us to genuinely believe him and trust him. And because of the system we live in, it's, 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 it's too easy to take a pill. It's too easy to call somebody to get this and that. But it takes determination and it takes trust to believe God to do what he said he would do. And, it, and, and when we allow him to do that, that's when we find out, oh, he, do, he is better than the pill. He is better than this. He is better than that. And so as we put that into action, we'll be able to see that. Okay, so uh, he helps his children know the real provider coming out of Genesis chapter 22, verse number 8. And, Ab and this, this incident was when Abraham took, was taking Isaac up to sacrifice him. And this and the other so forth and so on. But I'm just pulling out this phrase in here, which seems to be, seems to be a very challenging neg negative condition. But I want you to get these words here. Genesis chapter 22, verse number 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide. Hmm? God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went uh, they went, both of them together. So, so the, the, the stories they preach about, uh, uh, Isaac, was, uh, Abraham was good, going up to sacrifice his son because he believed that's what God told him to do. And God was checking him out to see if he's going to do what he said he would do. And so Isaac, young, strong boy, uh, uh, he, he said, come on, we got to go do this sacrifice. And he put the wood on the young boy and, and uh, they walked on out, heading on up the hill to do the sacrifice. And the boy got up along the way and he was saying, okay, dad, I see the wood. <laughs> I see the altar. I see you got a little, little, little knife laying over there. But where is the sacrifice? <laughs> so, <laughs> and strong Isaac, come on now. Strong young man, strong. Uh, so, uh, 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 Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb, okay? And 
uh, Isaac went ahead, allowed his father to tie him up and lay him up on that altar. Come on now. And, and, the, and Abraham raised up the knife, getting ready to do the sacrifice deal. Huh? And now, remember, God was checking him out to see what he would do. God was checking him out, as it were, to see if he could trust him to be the father of many nations. Huh? God was checking because God was getting ready to bless him beyond anything. He said, look up in the sky. You see all these stars up in there? Your descendants will be even more than that. And you won't be able to name them like the grains of the sand on the side of the seashore. So it sounds like to me, it was important for God to be sure of who he was dealing with. Hmm? So anyway, so, so the, 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 the phrase in here, God will provide. And I, and, I, and I challenge you to just get that in your spirit today, that God will. Oh, yes, he will. He will provide. Not in relationship to what you see or what you don't see. Not in relationship to what everybody else is doing or what everybody else is not doing. God will provide. Sometimes we struggle a little bit and we try to teach people that uh, don't hinder God, don't put him in a little small box, that, 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 that he has to provide it the way you think he ought, ought to provide it. No, you settle yourself on the power of God's word where it says he will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This verse here in Genesis chapter 22, verse number eight, God will provide. And I just pray in Jesus' name that somehow you allow that to establish in your spirit, in your innermost being, have it be anchored on the inside of you to the extent that it will even cause your thinking process yes. to accept the fact that I don't know how it's going to happen. It doesn't really matter how it's going to happen, but God will provide. Yes. Will you just say that out loud? Just earnestly say, God will come. God will provide. I want to push you. Let's say it one more time. God will provide in the matter of health, in the matter of provision, in the matter of relationship, in the matter of whatever is going on in your life. One more time, say it. God will, God will provide. provide. And, you, and, you, and you establish yourself in that and you set your spirit in that and watch and give him opportunity. He will do it. Highlight point number three. This is what a good father will do. He will make his children proud of him. Here's a verse in Genesis chapter 47, verse number seven. When I read through it, I was kind of like, well, why did you show me this? But then I, then, then I looked and I saw. Watch this in Genesis chapter 47, verse number seven. And Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh. Woo, that's the big dude in the day. Huh? Set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob, huh? Joseph's father did what? Blessed Pharaoh, the big dude in the whole region. Joseph had enough confidence in his father Jacob to take his father Jacob to see Pharaoh. And Jacob then blessed Pharaoh. Hallelujah. <laughs> and here's, here's this little uh, braggadocious experience uh, in, uh, in, 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 in my own personal life. Uh, I, I remember, I remember very clearly sometimes uh, we'd be talking to Shauna and what have you, and she'd be sitting, you know how she just puff up and just tears just be just rolling, just tears just, y'all don't know that? Well, we know it. <laughs> About her, you know it about some of your kids, huh? 
But anyway, she's in there crying, and uh, she was, we were asking her what was going on, and she was saying that one of her friends was having some kind of trouble. And she said, I didn't know what to tell her. I just said, well, come and talk to my dad. He'll be able to help you. Huh? So my, 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 my heart comes to say to you, uh, and I'm trying to say this nicely, what, what is your children telling other children about you? as their father, huh? We want them to have the attitude out of Genesis chapter 47, verse seven, that they have enough confidence in you. They know that you have prayed for them and the prayers came to pass, came to pass. Like, like, like Colin was here last week. He was saying he was going to some issue over to the dancery and out somewhere shaking his butt and, and all that. <laughs> and, and he said stuff got bad and he looked up and his mom, his mom was there with the van. He's like, whoa, where she come from? Don't matter where she come from. Open the door, mom. <laughs> you know, because they were getting ready to fight. And he jumped in the van and, and she was like, well, go out there and help the mother. Keys. He said, mom, drive off. <laughs> drive off now. OK. And then then uh, Sean, it was. Well, Shauna went to Cast Tech for a while. Uh, Stan Lewis and Carlin, they went to Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, and then, so, me being all engaged and involved and all that. So I got to be good friends with principals and, and teachers. And, 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 and my wife, uh, they, 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 would, they would call us. And, and, and so I was having a meeting with Dr. Sandra... Robinson, she was the principal over at Martin Luther King, and uh, she wanted me to be the head of the PTA or some, 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 some. And then, so, in being connected with Dr. Uh, Sandra Robinson, principal at Martin Luther King, then I had opportunity to engage with uh, Dr. Arthur Jefferson, who was the president of the Detroit School Board at that time, and then some of the primps, uh, some of the teachers and what have you over at CAS. And so one day we went to pick up Shauna from school about something, and we and I was saying to her, uh, so and so and such and such is going to happen tomorrow. She's like, Who told you that? I said, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he always tells us about what's going on with you all. And so you just make sure you know we're around. <laughs> and and I call it and Stan was the same way. They didn't know I was communicating with the principal. <laughs> so, but, but, make this a determination that you want the experience that you have with your children to be as strong as it can be, so that they will be proud of, of you and proud enough of you to then tell others about you and expect that you will bless their lives like you have been blessing their lives. Whoever the person they tell, that you'll go and bless them like you have been blessing them. You say, well, now, remember earlier at the beginning of the lesson, I said something to the effect of don't get carried away with what's going on now or what used to be or what happened with you, whatever. I'm saying let's get established in the principle and the power and the truth we see from God's word and determine that on the inside of ourselves, this is the way it will be at our house. This is the way that my fatherhood will be expressing itself from this day forward because I believe God's word. Amen. All right, then, then we're wrapping up here, wrapping up here. Uh, highlight point number four. A good father will equip his children to defend the faith. Wow. And sometimes more so these days seems like than ever before, uh, it's important to help our children be strong enough that they can hold their own uh, in the midst of peer pressure or craziness in the world and things of that nature. Um, now, 
uh, these points that we're talking about. I didn't put in there the proverb one about train up a child in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart. But uh, I do want to at this point emphasize that when you put the right stuff in your children, then the right stuff at the right time will rise up and protect them. The right stuff at the right time will rise up and help them choose to not get involved in this other stuff that all these other people are doing. The right stuff at the right time will help your children walk away. How come you're not giving me a little help? I need a little more help. I know you're looking in intense, but I need you to say something. At the right time, they will walk away. And they'll call you and say, Mom, come and get me now. And you get up and go get them. Or Dad, come and get me now. You get up and go get them. And then you bless them because they chose to do what is right. Huh? A lot of parents, uh, let me run by this real quick. A lot of parents <clears throat> stretch, stretch and scrape and scuffle to buy four $500 tennis shoes to reward a child for trying to keep up with little Mr. Stupid down the street. You need to reward them for choosing to do what is right. Come on. At the right time, based on how you've taught them. Okay, so uh, this defend the faith out of Acts chapter 3, verse 13. <clears throat> the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Now, the form of defending the faith these days takes many shapes. But nonetheless, it is important for us to help our children be able to understand the difference between what is right and what is wrong. It's critical that we help our children understand what morality really is. Not based on what the system says, but based on what God's word has to say. Because when this life is over, hey, judgment comes. Huh? What did, what did uh, back up in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19? For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do what? To do justice and judgment. Hmm? So I don't want to be saying this in a scary kind of way, but sometimes you have to put the fear of God in your children. Judgment, all this time. Judgment is coming. Oh, you might get by, like Mother Coulter used to say back at St. John Baptist Church in Springfield, Ohio. Uh, no, no, that was, uh, that was uh, Lillian Walker up here, uh, over back over Greater Christ Church, Greater Christ Baptist Church. She used to say, you might get by, but you won't get away. <laughs> huh? And there's a difference. And sometimes children think that just because they got by, that they'll get away. And we have to help them understand God's word is true. There is a heaven. There is a hell. There is God and there is the devil. Come on now. And he is real. And we intend to equip our children to be able to handle him and not put up with his foolishness. Come on now. And there's a lot of pressure going on these days for our children to get engaged in the devil's stuff. Huh? And so therefore, teach them, strengthen them, equip them by whatever means necessary to be, to be in the position that they will defend the faith. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, verse number 13. Let's move on to the last two. Now, here's the, here's the toughy part. Here's the little toughy part, uh, uh, this highlight point here. And I'm saying this to uh, fathers. I'm saying this to uh, men. I'm saying this to mothers. I'm saying this to women. Hmm? Be 
forgiven. I'm telling you, this awesome God we talked about, this great God that we sing about, he knows everything. He's everywhere present. He has all power. And so even in your stupid days, even in your crazy days, he was right there. And he knows. And then spending all this time trying to describe to him, well, well, God, you know, see, what, 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 what happened was, you know, <laughs> trying to go through all of that is not necessary. Amen. Decide that he's the awesome God. And yeah, I, I told you a little while ago, I've made mistakes. I've done stupid stuff. I've done crazy stuff. Sometimes I want to knock my own self upside the head <laughs> for being not just stupid, but S-T-O-O-P. P-E-D-D, stupid, huh? And yet, the awesome God, come on, Elohim has a way that when you get on your face before him and you tell him, Father, in the name of Jesus, I've sinned against you. Forgive me. Now, in Jesus' name. And guess what he does? Woo! He takes whatever it is, he balls it up, and he just throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. To never rise against you again. Amen. People may bring it up, but God threw it. Hmm? God throwed it. <laughs> into the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. And it will never rise again. Amen. And so a lot of times we scuffle along, we deal with situations, issues, circumstances, and we forgive other people. And or a lot of times they say, well, I forgive you, but then we have to forgive ourselves. Yes. Huh? Oh, you, 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 it's kind of like a pot. You put it on the back burner on the stove and turn it on real low. Turn the fire on real low and it'll just sit there and just bubble, 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 bubble. It'll just sit there and just percolate. Bubbly poo poo. Poo poo doo doo. Poo poo doo. Poo poo doo doo. Poo poo doo. And just at the moment when you have a great blessing and joy coming along your way, it'll say, poo. You know, remember what you did? <laughs> remember what you did? You don't deserve that. Hmm? That's why it's important to forgive yourself and be forgiven. Sometimes we did everything we could do. Sometimes we try everything we could try and our children still just go just crazy or we make some kind of financial decision and it just destroys the family finances. Or we just let some stupid, crazy something come along. We let, listen, we let some disease in the house and just invite it in to sit down and have a cup of coffee. And then it's destroying our children. And we open the door. We have to be willing to say, God, I opened that door. But I'm on my way right now. <laughs> I'm going to shut that door and, and I receive your forgiveness and I'm going to stand at that door like Charles Atlas or Big Superman or Amen. Batman or Wonder Man or whoever. Huh? <laughs> and declare no more. Amen. The thief don't come in this house Amen. to steal, yeah. kill, or destroy. Why? Because he has to come through me. And he ain't coming. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And, and, and I pray that you will in a spiritual sense go through your house right now and kick out everything that don't belong. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Just like, I don't know where it was, but in one house we lived on East Grand Boulevard, our boys stayed upstairs, up, upstairs, 
And uh, so they had basically kind of like their own little kingdom thing. And uh, I don't know if it was my wife or I, one time we found some Playboy magazines up there. Mm. So me, I'm going to make a big to-do out of it. And Holy Spirit said, hey, where do you think they got that from? And I was like, <laughs> I, and then I tried to do like most of us, what you mean, God? He said, how about those Playboy magazines that you had? Well, I bought those for the articles. <laughs> now, of course, today it's just between pornography and all other kind of stuff. It's just pervasive. But I believe in Jesus' name. You can go spiritually through your house and kick out everything that don't belong that's against God. Hey, Amen. now, hey, I'm going to give you a little room. I'm going to give you a little room. It might not jump up and walk out right then, but you make the declaration. Hmm? And you stay with it, and God will clean that house up. Uh, I got a, one little amen over there, a couple of heads. Here. I need an out loud amen. Come on. Here. God will clean the house. And when God cleans it, he going to sweep it like an old broom. Hmm? He going to get up in the corners. Huh? He going to do that. You, you, he going to do that, 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 that cobweb thing. You know, sometimes that cobweb be swing. And it seems like the worst time f company finally come. And here come this cobweb swinging way down from the ceiling. You done did all this thing. And here come. But God has a way. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. When you're willing to present your house to him as a house that serves the Lord, that you're going to do in relationship to how he commanded Abraham to have the whole household do justice and judgment, God will clean the house. Amen. Hallelujah. And your house will be blessed beyond measure. Here's the last. Oh, the psalm, the psalm, the psalm from Be Forgiven, Psalm number 31. Now, now, now catch this when, when I read it to you. Psalm number 31, stanza number five. It says, Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Amen. Hmm. And so as a father, this is what a good father will do. A good father will give himself, give his spirit to God from the position that you redeem me, father. Uh, in science, in medicine, in, in, in these different other fields, it is a proven fact that God created this body in such a way that even when we mistreat it over a certain period of time, whenever we choose to start doing what's right, immediately the body begins to heal itself. Amen. Huh? So when you commit your spirit, crazy thinking, wrong attitude, anger, malice, or when you commit your spirit to God, he will redeem you. He will put, he, listen, he will put joy down in your heart and in your spirit. He'll put a watch over your mouth. He will put a knife to your throat and have you quit eating stuff that you ain't got no business eating. And when you take time to pause, one of the things that Dr. Caroline Leaf mentioned in several things, and don't just pick this one little thing and try to run with it. No, you got to deal with the whole process. But she said, these, the, God created us in such a way, in one of the most powerful ways, and for, one of the most powerful ways for our lives to get better is that every 10 seconds, she said, we should communicate with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Every 10 seconds communicate with Holy Spirit. Now and again, that's a whole program and you look her up on the internet, online service, all that, da, 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 da. but hey, what I just said just now, when you commit yourself to God, he will put a watch over your mouth. And there are some things that get to rolling on the inside of your head 
that get pumping up out of your heart. And you say, when I, you, know, you, you know, when I say this, it's going to buckle her knees. She's going to fall on the floor like she got a knife stuck in her back. So I'm getting ready to let her have it. Hmm? God will put a watch over your mouth. If you take a moment and say, this whole situation is well set for me to say what I'm getting ready to say. And he earned it. He deserves it. And I'm going to make sure he hears this so she won't do that again. And you hear Holy Spirit say, uh-uh, not now. Did you hear that? Uh-uh, not now. Huh? And when you yield and back up, you'll watch Holy Spirit come along and just fix that thing. Huh? And he'll, <laughs> like this, he'll fix it real good too. <laughs> huh? Huh? So then, commit your spirit, yield, recognize that he has redeemed us and he will, he, because he is the God of truth. Okay, last one, uh, and get, last highlight point a good father will give himself to the Father God, not just the Godfather. Remember the dude said, he said, hey, say, hey, hey, man, I can make you a deal. You will not refuse. Huh? That's the way God does. He make, he'll make you a deal. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash them white as snow. Huh? Though you were wayward, <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wherever he laid his hat was his home. <laughs> and all he left us <laughs> was alone. You understand? Huh? No matter. Come on now. God will make you a deal that you cannot refuse. He'll tell you, I will restore everything that the canker worm destroyed. Yeah. All of that that you thought was lost, I'll fix it and turn it around. And your latter days will be so much greater than your former days. That's why we use that uh, benediction when we finish service, that blessing according to Isaiah chapter 65 verse number 16 saying the God of truth and fidelity. Uh, uh, when you study that out uh, in the commentaries and what have you, it say in essence that God will bless you so good that you won't even remember. You won't even remember the hard, harsh things that had happened in the past. That's a deal. You cannot <laughs> refuse. Huh? And, and God say, God say, you're like the Godfather. You know, I'll take care of him. <laughs> I'll send some people <laughs> over to his house. Huh? And I'll put a horse head in his bed. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. So, uh, highlight point number six, give yourself to God, the Father, the real Godfather. According to the gospel, according to Luke chapter 23, verse number 46. Here again is out of one of these tragic, you know, we, people look at it as being a very tragic kind of situation. Jesus hanging on the cross. Here's what he said. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thine hand. Into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. My challenge to you as a father, as a man, as a woman, as a mother, to commit your spirit into the hand of God. And he'll take it. Oh, yes, he will. And he'll use it for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, here's our teaching point, action point, determination point. In the teaching point, when...
fathers learn from God. Well, you know, I didn't have my dad. He wasn't around. He, I don't know who my dad was. God is still available to teach you what to teach your children and your son. And you break the cycle. Huh? All right. Um, uh, fathers, learn, when fathers learn from God and teach the children, then Father God is happy. God doesn't want your children languishing in jail somewhere. You know, uh, 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 if you see my child, tell him send me a letter, you know, and, or tell him to come on home or where he may be in jail, he may be hungry, he may be out in the cold. God don't want, listen, God don't want your children out there. He doesn't want them in mess, junk, garbage. Hmm? But when you learn from God and then teach your children, put into action what he teaches you, then he's happy to get your child back home. Yes, he is. Amen. He's happy to bless your child with blessings beyond anything that they can imagine. Action point. So you can start now. Start now to stop the buck with you. Hmm? No matter what's been going on, no matter who hanging out where, no matter who going through what, you start now. Declare the buck stops here. Uh, 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 and, and we'll go forward in that way. Lastly, determination point, trust and expect God to honor his word because that's where it is. It's in the word of God. God will honor his word in your life. When, when do I have up there? When, 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 come on. when, 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 when. Now, when you make the decision, when you, at a minimum, even if you just say that you believe God's word to come to pass in your life. The process starts when you say it and God comes along to bring the past what's declared in his word into your life. There will be <laughs> peace in your family. Oh, I wish you could say that. There will be peace in my family. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let me invite you to stand up on your feet if you will. Uh, I told you at the beginning that I'm, I am a personal living witness. <laughs> I got people, sometimes, sometimes, this is, uh, uh, Carlin, Shauna, Stan Lewis, Carol, even the grandbabies, sometimes uh, Cameron, I, I remember Kara, we were somewhere and, and she, uh, she told her, Don't, do you know who my grandfather is? You know. Uh, when your children know who they are in God and when the blessings and grace of God comes to pass in their lives there will be peace there will be peace in your family, in your heart in your spirit let me pray for you Father we take this moment I've done my best to deliver this word as you gave it to me and I ask you in Jesus' name to make sure each person receives the sense, the wisdom, and the understanding that you determine to get across in their lives. And that even as we leave this place and or as we've heard this message, we will go forward trusting and having the power of Holy Spirit lead us to be the fathers that you've determined for us to be. And these generations that we are dealing with even now and the generations yet to come will be blessed because of the choices we make to receive the truth from your word and put them into action in our lives. Thank you, sir, for this time together in your word in the marvelous magnificent majestic name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth thank you for being our father Alleluia. amen 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 all right let me take
take this moment to pronounce this blessing on you. This blessing comes from Numbers chapter 6 in the Amplified Version of the Scripture. Huh? Yeah, I'm just going to bless out from the message and then we'll do that part. Yeah, uh, so then in uh, the Amplified Version of the Scripture, in Numbers chapter 6, beginning at verse number 22, I'm getting ready to pronounce this blessing in your life. Maybe some of you decide to accept me as your father, your pastor. So I'm pronouncing this blessing over you from that position that God honors first your willingness to trust him and second your desire to receive from me his servant sent to you this blessing. In Numbers chapter 6 at verse number 22, when you read it there, you'll find these words. And the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron and his sons, see there, father, say as a father, his sons, this is the way you shall bless the Israelites, say to them. So I'm saying this blessing and I'm saying it into you now. I say the Lord bless you and watch, guard, and keep you. I say the Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, merciful, giving favor to you. I say the Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace tranquility of heart and life continually. If you'll take now that hand of blessing you receive, place on your own forehead. According as you heard me say earlier in Isaiah chapter 65 verse number 16, you're authorized to bless yourself. So let's do that now. Say this out loud. May the God of truth and fidelity, the amen, bless me now with grace mercy, peace, and provision in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you. Go ahead and be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you for those of you watching. Check out our website, stc.church. Uh, those of you on the conference call, remember, come on into the building on Thursday for our time of Thursday Thunder. And then those of you will be back again next week in Jesus' name. Alleluia. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in to the Salvation Temple broadcast. We'd like to invite you to our weekly services, Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m. and Thursday evenings at 615 p.m. We look forward to seeing you at Salvation Temple Church, where the focus is on you.